Hi, welcome to our web design video blog. We're Nick and James from Creare. Today we're going to talk about building a website using PHP includes and also compare that to building a website using Dreamweaver templates. Dreamweaver templates use HTML comments to specify that a web page is part of that template. The templates are not dated in Dreamweaver and the change rolls out to all the files locally. You then have to upload the whole site to the remote view. The pages are W3C compliant, but it adds extra lines of code that you don't necessarily want or need. So PHP includes basically work by building your website on lots of separate include files. Uh, you store these in a separate folder and you source them or recall them onto a single page to create a full HTML web page. The advantage of doing it this way is that if you're, let's say for example, have a header um, include and you wanted to change something in that's part of the design, if you uploaded that single file to the server, the whole website would be automatically updated. Um, you can use PHP includes in Dreamweaver, so you can construct a full website using uh, PHP includes in Dreamweaver. But the disadvantage of using PHP includes can be when you're using subfolders. The linking system can get a little bit messy. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our demonstration. Okay, so James is going to show the demonstration on how to use PHP includes. Um, don't forget you can get all the files on the Creator Design blog at creadesign.co.uk forward slash blog. Okay, so if you download the zip file from our supporting blog, you'll see inside there's a small website that I've made for this demonstration and also the example talks to you a little bit about um, how the PHP includes work. So I've set this up in my uh, Dreamweaver, I'm using Dreamweaver CS4 and you'll see that there's a folder with a few images in. We've got the includes folder which contains the head, header and footer, index page and there's also a few pages in the style sheet. So essentially I've opened this page also in Safari so you can see what this little mini website using PHP includes looks like. The home page just has a basic introduction and tells you how to embed um, an include, like so. Page one talks to you about using subdirectories, which we'll talk more about in a moment. And page two talks about maintaining anchors when using subdirectories. So let's just have a little bit of a closer look at this in Dreamweaver. If I open up the index page, you'll see that the way this has been put together is that the top part of the website has been sourced from one of the include files. So if I open up head, you'll see that this is the start of a HTML document. The reason why there isn't one big header and the title separated is so that this can be used you know, for SEO purposes because on a website you don't want every page title to be the same. So it's important to leave this uh, separate. The second include is the header.php, which includes some generic meta tags, the link to the style sheet, and the header of my design. Then I've got my pages unique content and then I finally have a include for the footer like shown here. And then the good thing is in Dreamweaver I'm using CS4 I think this also works in quite a few of the uh, backward versions you can actually see the design a little bit like using Dreamweaver templates so much like Dreamweaver templates, I can't actually edit any of this information that's used in an include. I would actually have to open up the header include to be able to modify that information. So all I've got access to is the generic area, which is here for the individual page. So if we take a close look at these uh, accompanying pages of the tutorial, it basically explains a little bit about using uh, subdirectories. So if, for example, we're going to make a subfolder in here, like so, and let's say we would call it um, I don't know, services, and we were to then put a page inside here and source the same includes files, we would need to then go back a layer to get them, so you'd have to do a dot dot forward slash to source those include files. If you then want to maintain links in your include files, what you then also need to do is to correctly link up files that are in the include files. So for example, if I was to build a page using my includes into, into the services subfolder, it would source the PHP include correctly, however the links would be broken. So what I would need to do is open up my includes. And if I start with the footer, just as an example, I would need to put a forward slash at the front of each of these links to signify that the link resides on the first root layer of the directory. This same principle should be followed also on JavaScripts and also style sheets. Okay, so if I close this down, this little um, website that's in the zip folder, you know, you can use this to start the basis of your own PHP include website, um, or even just sort of use it to copy and paste the relevant coding and so forth. Um, so hopefully this uh, little tutorial and little website will be of some use to you. Thanks for that, James. And don't forget you can download all the supporting files on the Career Design blog at careerdesign.co.uk forward slash blog. There's also a uh, web page you should check out if you're struggling to identify a typeface. It's called What the Font. I'm just going to show you how to use this now. 
Okay, so uh, what the font is a tool that you can use to identify typefaces. Uh, for this example, I've prepared a typeface which I could have scanned in potentially from a document which just says Creer. I can't even remember the typeface that I've used it since. So this will be quite a uh, useful tutorial. So <clears throat> if you go to myfonts.com slash what the font, and essentially all you have to do is upload the file. Click on continue and uh, their software will essentially identify the individual characters of that word. So you can see here, for example, it's analyzed the individual letters in the word. Um, <clears throat> and it's also specified here what it thinks they are. So you have to check that it's matched them up correctly. And if it's done it correctly like it has done here, you click continue. And it shows you potentially what the name of that font could be. Um, so this one, this Creo word is written in Revu. So um, if I had a, a collection of fonts, I could obviously look for this uh, typeface or potentially uh, purchase it if I needed to use it for a new client that had it, for example, for their logo. So quite a useful website, this one, to help you identify any uh, typefaces that you don't know what they are. So that's myfonts.com slash whatthefont. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash career group or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash career group.